Community District, and I have been the principal of the combined academies, both Robeson and Malcolm X, for the last 10 years. Excellent. Perfect. Um, and Dr. Robinson, can you share what makes um, Paul Robeson Malcolm X Academy special? Talk about the mission of your school, the unique programs that it offers. Well, uh, we always like to um, share that Robeson Malcolm X, or Malcolm X uh, proper, is the first African-centered, first public African-centered school in the country. It was started uh, due to the innovation and concern for the accomplishments academically of African-American children. It was started here in the city of Detroit, and I make the emphasis on the first public African-centered school because there were others that existed prior to uh, Malcolm X opening in 1989. Uh, but to that end, our goal is to center the black child at, uh, put the black child at the center, excuse me, of all learning. Um, every subject taught, every lesson learned uh, in some way connects to the accomplishments, involvement, impact of African Americans here in uh, American society. And so to that end, our goal is a constant a uh, supplemental process. Uh, we are Detroit Public Schools, so we do use the regular curriculum, but in that we supplement by adding in those accomplishments, those, that information uh, that has unfortunately and traditionally been left out of the books that uh, the district uh, and other schools are, are purchasing uh, to educate children. And so that's what makes African American education, African centered education special because we endeavor to um, connect our children with their blackness. And blackness is not uh, anything that's connected necessarily to skin color. Uh, being connected to blackness, by definition, is being connected to America because uh, America would not be what America is today had it not been for the accomplishments, uh, the uh, labor, the innovation, the creation of African Americans. And so to that end, our children need to have a better sense of not just who they are, but where they came from, and more importantly, what they are capable of, in part by learning uh, of the accomplishments of those that came before them. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I'm just going to move to a different angle here. You have great pictures in your bag. Um, so Dr. Robinson, perfect. Can you give some examples of how that African-centered curriculum and mission comes to life. So I know you have music programs, your dance programs. Talk, share some about those programs you offer. It, it comes to life. Um, the cultural aspect of our program is, um, I guess, defined by immersion. We want to immerse our children in the history, not only academically, but we try to do so through uh, pictures. Uh, we try and do so through African dance. Um, we do so through the various programs and activities that we sponsor throughout the year, some of which we become um, quite known for. Uh, this is the Kwanzaa season, and so every year, Paul Robeson, Malcolm X, and Marcus Garvey, we combine and put on a, a bar none Kwanzaa celebration where, uh, again, lessons of African American history are taught. Uh, it's accentuated with dance and food, and it's just turned into a community event which people look forward to. Uh, we combine and go to the Harambe Room at Marcus Garvey, and we just have a, a celebration. Um, Kwanzaa, which is often misinterpreted as a com competitor to Christmas, is really not. It's really an accentuation of community. It's an accentuation of we are all connected together, we all need each other, and that we all have something for which we are able to share. And so uh, when you hear people use somewhat as a cliche, it takes a village, well, we're working on establishing what that village is, what it looks like. Um, if it takes a village to raise a child, then everyone in that village needs to identify with what their contribution to raising that child, educating that child, helping that child. Um, it's a, um, I like to think, a expansion of that whole child concept because more than educating the child and feeding the child, that child's mind has to be nourished. That child has to be immersed in his or her culture and see themselves in the education that we're trying to deliver here in DPSCD. And that's one of the main missions of Paul Robeson Malcolm X Academy and our sister school, Marcus Garvey. 
Perfect. Thank you so much. I got two more questions for you. Okay. Um, share about, so you clearly have a rich curriculum and community here. Um, talk about your staff, how, who, who is on your team and what, what skills and, you know, knowledge do they bring to the table to lift up your mission? Uh, bar none, I have one of the best staff, if not the best staff in Detroit Public Schools Community District. I'm honored to be able to say that uh, a large majority, and I don't have an exact number, but I would think 75% of the staff have been a part of African Centered Education for 10 years plus. Um, as we all know, um, Robinson and Malcolm X were combined in 2011. And so uh, to that end, um, we have uh, scholars and um, uh, um, uh, veterans of African-centered education from both Robeson and Malcolm X now in one place, combining what were already similar missions uh, to better educating uh, our children. We can bind our school models. Now we're time on task to a better education by any means necessary, which is a combination of Robeson and Malcolm X. So our staff are all master degree teachers. Um, we are all, uh, as I said, trained in African-centered education, and we grapple yearly with how we can better supplement and add to the general curriculum. Um, all of my teachers were part of the uh, committee work that Dr. Vitti initiated in terms of um, vetting the EL and Eureka uh, curriculums in order to be sure, again, that we accentuate